G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today we're going to look at a subject that uh, a few people probably know exists. Uh, it's a, an issue you can get with a metal lathe, and it can be damn frustrating. And the issue is that whenever you use the carriage to drill or mill, something in the chuck, or maybe you use the headstock to drill or mill something mounted on a vertical mill slide on the cross slide. The, pro the problem you're going to get is that the, f the actual job, uh, the angle of the mill or drill is going to be wrong. It, it's not going to be what you expect, you know, in the case of drilling into the, the headstock, as you apply pressure at the drill point, and bear in mind you're going to be doing it with the top slide or the hand wheel. The problem you're getting is that all the loading is going to be on the point of the drill. And as you apply pressure, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction. So it's going to push back this way. But the problem is, as there's nothing to support this here, it's going to then try and pivot on the cross slide and it's also going to try and lift the carriage off of the, the waves because of the pure mechanics of what you're trying to do. So if you're drilling or milling, all that pressure is going to transmit back through here and it will, will be applied at 90 degrees to the carriage or the, the cross slide and there will be a corresponding leverage effect where you're going to try and crank up, lever up the drill or the mill because that's the only, that's the point of least resistance. There's nothing at the back on the same plane to prevent that happening. And if you don't believe me, I'll put a dial gauge, uh, a chest indicator rather, on the top of the carriage to measure the, the, the deflection of the carriage as I apply pressure here and I'll also put a test indicator on the carriage and measure deflection of the cross slide and you'll see what I mean you'll see what's happening okay first off we'll measure deflection, upward deflection of the carriage face as we apply pressure to the to the drill. So I'll apply it with the hand wheel because that's the easiest way to do it. And that is the carriage moving vertically. I mean there'll be some horizontal movement but that's basically vertical deflection. Now that's going to get transmitted to the drill or the mill. So basically the drill or the mill will deflect up because they are going to be parallel to the carriage face. So there's uh, proof number one. So now we'll measure cross slide vertical deflection from the carriage which the test indicator is mounted on. So as I apply pressure onto the drill tip, you'll see the carriage, top of the carriage flex up. There you go. So that's another point of deflection. Not only is the carriage trying to lift, but the cross slide is off of the bed, off the ways, but the cross slide is also trying to lift off of the top of the, the carriage. So now you can understand why the hole that you drill 
using the carriage into the job in the chuck isn't parallel to the ways, it's cantered up because the drill's trying to take the path of least resistance so it's going to cant back it up and the same thing will happen when you have a mill or a drill in the headstock and you have the work mounted on a vertical mill slide once again the job is going to tilt back and you're going to get an angle the cutter will, won't move, the cutter will be in the, on the same plane as, as it was fitted but the work is going to camp back so it's either going to be work camp back or cutter camp back on the mill slide which is mounted on the cross slide which is mounted on the carriage which is all trying to tilt back and it will to some degree so how do you get around this how do you, how do you manage to drill an accurate hole 90 degrees to the to the job or parallel to the to the ways how can you do it well there is a simple solution and I'll show you what it is now the simple way around it is staring you right in the face it's the tailstock Obviously, if you drill with the drill now in the tailstock, you won't get any cant in the, uh, the cross slide because you're not using the cross slide. So ultimately, what I'm saying is the tailstock will always be on the centre line. So what do you do? You use the tailstock to drive the, the, the carriage and the compound into the job. By doing that, you're pushing right on the centre line. So everything is on the same plane. So there's no canning possible. Now, the situation you've got, of course, is that you've got offset in this situation. With a mill, with a mill slide, quite often you can just push the, push the uh, centre up against the back of the mill slide and just drive it in, just drive it in with the hand wheel. But in this case, we can't do that because there's an offset. My drilling position doesn't allow it to happen because I'm drilling away from centre. So what do you do? Well, I'll show you how a simple way that I use gets around it. So what we do is we take out the, the centre and then we either use a drill chuck in here or we use something like this made up to move your centre line force from here across to here. And normally this does the job, it normally engages with the back of the top slide, but in this case it's just a little bit too short. I mean I just made it up, this up, up out of some scrap years ago. I could have made it longer and you can vary the position just by angling it. Or you can make it slotted or you could do whatever you want. But it's no big deal. Okay, it's not going to come up against the back of the top slide, but that's no big deal. I'll just put a, uh, a centre in the other drill, and we'll just do that up, and that will just push against here. Can't do any damage. So we'll just do that. So now, when we push, it's going to push the whole job through uh, in line, basically there won't be any canting of the, the top slide. So yeah, you rig this up how, however uh, suits your, your lathe. And if I'd made this plate longer, it would do more offset, but I didn't think I'd be going quite this far when I made it. But it's still no big deal because we can push against the back of the drill or you can push against the back of your drill or whatever. So now we just do the job and uh, yeah, it should do a perfect a perfectly in line job. Let's turn the light. That might make it easier to see. And we'll start up the drill and then we'll bring it in with the tail stop. I'm just spotting this with a spot drill first. Okay, so we've spotted that. Dead on line, dead in position. 
Now we'll put in the drill we want to use. carriage and now we'll push with the tail stop and she'll go in. There you go, that's how you do it. Now normally I wouldn't have to use the, the centre in the other uh, drill chuck. It was just that, yeah, I'm a long way off of the centre line and my little adapter plate isn't long enough. You can easily make it as long as you want. Even by pivoting the whole thing, you can vary the, the amount that comes into contact. Push on that centre line and you get basically the same effect as if you're just drilling with the tail stop. So there you have it. Job done. I can guarantee that hole will be 90 degrees on both planes because we were pushing directly on the, the, the line of the drill. Once you get away from centre, you're going to get a canning effect and that's exactly what happens. And it's disappointing when you, you think you're doing everything right, but when you drive it in using the rack and the hand wheel, you are basically uh, just magnifying any movement in the cross slide at the drill tip and your drill is going to be going in on an angle. So hopefully this helps people and anybody who wants to do precision work, well yeah this is the way you get around it. Try and apply your force as close to the centre line as possible. Use the tail stop. It's uh, just another use for the tail stop. Okay that's it from me. Hope you got something out of it. See you next time. Cheers.